Hi, man, Drum Strong, and welcome to the back of this teardown lab. We are zoomed out today because we have a big boy. That is, of course, this Akai amplifier. Look at that lovely finish. Now, the problem with this Akai amplifier is that one of the channels is refusing to work, and it is a heavy, heavy brute. So what I'm going to do is take the lid off so we can actually have a look inside. Just remove these side panels. Look, they're made out of real wood. Isn't that fancy? Gotta love the old aesthetic here. I'll just get the other one off and hopefully a little pop off. Nice and loose now. And that's how it's put together. They don't make them like that anymore. So this does look perfectly serviceable. That's a good thing. And look how it's got all these individual cards. Unfortunately, there is PCB underneath this. So I'm hoping whatever we need is on the top half. And just so you can see here, these audio pots at the front have two knobs, an inner knob and an outer knob. And they were a little bit uh, dirty. You could hear it when you turn the knob, a little bit of a hissy, crushy sound. So we'll be giving those a little spray while we're in here. So first things first, let's start investigating. Just taking the bottom panel off as well because some of the wires we want are going underneath there. So the specifics though of the issue are that it had uh, a problem with the right hand channel. So the right hand channel is totally dead now. I've taken the bottom panel off because I want to trace out where the speakers go. And the speaker colors we are interested in are a green wire. And I can see the green wire goes all the way around to here, which is the speaker selection switch. And my main aim is to figure out the path that that goes to because it's the right hand speaker is not doing anything. And we want to be able to work it all the way back to the point of failure. Just getting in here to show you that this is a really decent piece of kit. Look, all these tiny coax cables, proper switches, proper discrete components, not a single integrated circuit on there at all. Well, maybe, maybe a MOSFET or a power regulator on the other side, but you know what I mean. All of the knobs and of course, BBC radio. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a radio tuner, but I'm guessing the BBC sent out this sticker at some point. Hopefully you don't have to replace any capacitors because you've got plenty of them here. And you've got all of these discrete boards. Really nice stuff, actually. I know we like talking about the uh, things like the quads and stuff in the Discord, but this stuff is, is going to be pretty good and pretty serviceable by modern standards. As you can see, I flipped it round. I've undone the brackets on the various amplifiers and I have attached a couple of speakers. However, I do want to let you know, <laughs> I actually did just power this on just to make sure my speakers were wired up correctly and they both were working absolutely fine. And it could be because I did uh, pull these out and wiggle them about just to see, make sure they would come out okay when I started filming. So that seems to suggest a bad contact. And as we've got this all apart, I can actually just show you the second issue I wanted to fix. And while we're doing that, we'll clean this out. And that was the noisy potentiometers. So you can see the potentiometers at the top of the screen there. Um, so what I'm going to do is attempt to use some fast drying contact cleaner. Now, this is the one I, I tend to use. Unfortunately, this one's run out. There's only a bit left, so I might end up having to use something a little bit naughtier. So hopefully it won't come to that. I'll see if I can get any of this into the switch. So the first thing, let's turn it on so you can hear what actually goes on. And I've got an, a hissy if audio. I try, I'll have to put my so I'm just mind. putting my hands on these speakers. Then just I to make sure I can feel the, the, the cones moving. I might actually get uh, an oscilloscope on those later just to make sure they're outputting the same voltage and things like that to ensure that one of these isn't actually weak. But as I play the volume control, I'm afraid so. you might be able to hear that crackling noise. So most of that crackling is coming out this left channel. So one of these is the right, one of these is the left on these two pots here. So I'm just going to turn that off because we don't want to get electrocuted. And in fact, unplug it. It's good. I really want to make sure. Now get your nozzle out if you've got WD-41. Conveniently, they have this nozzle. Although on this can, it doesn't seem to want to work. Probably because I'm at low pressure or just running out. So I'm going to get in there like that and I'm going to spray in to the openings of those potentiometers. So there's a little window on top, which you'll see. And if you can get some in there and just work it a bit, and I am running out. <laughs> no, hopefully that's enough. 
and I'm going to power it back on and we'll see if that crackling goes away when we turn the knob. Growing stronger. And it has. In short, it's totally gone. We'll have to play the game of That's absolutely brilliant. So you can hear there, there's no crackling at all. And let's start right now. Great, so I've rectified the main issues that I wanted to rectify. Now let's uh, have a look at the boards while we're here though, and I'm a bit ginger because they yeah, have big capacitors on here, and I'm hoping there's not too much juice going on. So that is one of the channels. I'm not sure the order, if it's right, left, left, right, but they are uh, standard boards, so they're both exactly the same, and they're little amplifiers. Uh, and I'm just going to turn it at an angle so I can have a look in there. So you do have four transistors, and we have a... 2SC959, 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 and a 2SA606. I don't know if the SC and the SA is a, is a NPN or PNP flip over. Two adjustment pots on the top. And of course, a few electrolytics. All looking good. And then we flip it over the back. You can see a little bit of uh, old flux residue there. That's not great. But this is the bit where we need to take particular care. Now, I have run out of the WD40, so I'm going to be moving on to my... Uh, carb cleaner which is a little bit more caustic but I'm just going to spray it kind of at an angle off camera because I don't want the, the spray to go into the amp yeah. you can see it has a very vigorous spray you only need a touch and I do have here a soldering iron station sponge and I'm going to just wipe those contacts down and I'm going to do the first half like that and then you can see there, there's a bit of green on here. It's pretty hard to pick up on the camera because it's quite fine, but there is green on there. And that is a corrosion, a surface corrosion. So it's definitely worth going through and rubbing that. And you can use other things. You can use a pencil eraser if you've got one. If you don't, if you don't have a pencil eraser, you're unlikely to have these, but you can get these little brushes. So that one's got like a steel wool and that's fiberglass. I think the fiberglass one would be, in fact, don't do it over the amp if you can help it. Um, it would be good too and if you, in fact I'm just holding it at an angle to the light which you can't quite see but yeah that's doing a great job you can just shine those up buff it up and if you've got your contact cleaner again just give a spray on the edge connector there on the board right there on my left hand just give a spray in uh, there oh the bit came out and then when you put the boards in just work them a little bit up and down a couple of times like that and I guarantee you that's probably a great connection and it'll be good for another 50 years. So let me do the same to the other and we'll power it back on again and see if this is performing okay. All the spraying's done, boards are back, let's turn it back on. In the center of the room was a robot. Now I've done the volume, the balance, the treble, all of them now, so. What seemed an almost affectionate gesture. And of course it was absolutely motionless. So the treble, Behind the robot it's was fine. a of garments. The bass has a very slight amount. To one side of it. Put, could do it another dose. The sound of a broken hearted sobbing. Volume is fine. Trevis darted around the robot. And from the other side, a small figure shot out, shrieking. And that it one looks like it could do a little bit more. It fell to the ground and lay there, covering its eyes, kicking its legs in all directions, as though... a child doing here. Vander had been so proud of its absolute solitude, so insistent upon it. Pellerat, less apt to fall back on iron reasoning in the face of an obscure event, seized upon the solution at once and said, I suppose this is the successor. Vander's child, said Bliss, agreeing. But too young, I think, to be a successor. The Solarians will have to find one elsewhere. The child, not in a fixed glare, but in a soft, mesmerizing way. And slowly, the noise the child was making lessened. I'm it very pleased with that. That seems to be return. all I need to do. Reduced. So the last thing I want to do is get a scope on the speaker output so that we can actually measure something. So you can probably hear that there's a tone playing, that's a 400 hertz tone. I'm going to attach it now to the left speaker. Let's see what we get on the scope. Okay, we're going to have to adjust that. 
So you can see we're adjusted now and we're seeing a sine wave on the screen. It does say it's 443, so I'm not quite sure if it's quite right. This is the MP3 file I downloaded off the internet. You can see duty cycle 50%, which is exactly what you expect. And you're seeing the Vmax is coming out half a volt and Vmin half a volt, minus half a volt, so that's a one volt peak to peak. In fact, the VPP, volts peak to peak, 1.05. Now, if I put that onto the other speaker, which is the right hand side, it does look like it's a little bit lower, 0.75. So if I adjust the right one to its one volt, okay, and now let's go back over to the left. You can see it's 1.39 volts, so there is slight difference in them. Now, what makes me wonder, there are some adjustments on here. It is possible that they could affect that. Now, we don't know which is the left and the right, though, so we have to be a little bit careful. I'm going to turn the volume down. So I'm going to make some very slight adjustment on one of these just to see if it makes any effect on the screen. Nope. So let's try this one. Yes, you can see it there moving around, right? So that is the, the right hand channel and this is the left. So let's see what this one does. So this has the effect of moving it up and down in relation to zero. I'm going to have a little fiddle and see if we can find a way of balancing these out. Played with these adjusters, yeah, they don't really do much for me, <laughs> to be honest with you. So what I did was I swapped the boards around and I still saw the same issue with the voltages um, exhibited. So I suspect it could be the balance control. So I'm going to have a quick look to see if there's any presets on the balance, but maybe it's the sort of thing you might just have to live with and just have the control turned a little bit. But I'll uh, turn this all around so I can have a look at that. Now bear witness to its full beauty. You've got the lovely knobs with the knob within a knob technology. In fact, uh, it's very hard to turn them by hand to show you with one hand, but trust me, that bit and that bit are two separate knobs. You've got two sets of output speakers you can have, and according to the manual, there's a sort of a weird quadraphonic setup you can set up. You've got filters, loudness, mute, cassette stuff, which I guess is to do with dubbing, microphones, good for karaoke night, and now crackle-free knobs, which is a really good. That's That was the main thing I wanted to fix. And you have all these interesting modes. You can have stereo mode, left and right mono, left mono, right mono, and reverse. So you've got plenty of crazy modes with the speaker, and of course, all of your inputs. So it's good stuff. And there you can see the amplifier boards. There's a power supply board there, and I'm not sure. This is kind of one of the big power amps. Probably, probably output amplifiers there. And then, of course, plenty of capacitors. Big transformer. That's why it's so bloody heavy loads of gubbins in there. I'm pretty glad that all I need to do is now just adjust the balance control from here to here to get it even. There is a grub screw in the back which if you're so inclined you can get in there. I'm a bit OCD, I do like the knobs to be vertical but I could probably just live with that if it means getting on with life. There, so I guess sorry it's uh, no soldering today pulling out the components but it is a hi-fi one and that's nice in itself. Thank you for watching. <laughs>